All right. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to the second Island Ore Claw lesson brought to you by uh, Island Ore Foundation and Diego Pino, our, our Claw committer. This week is going to be a bit of a continuation of last week where we're still looking at Fedora 4 in detail, but we'll be going more hands-on and Diego will be doing some demonstrations. He's put a couple of links for you. Um, there's a window on screen there that has uh, a link to the slides and to some resources that we're we'll working with today. And just a reminder, this session will be recorded for sharing afterwards. And if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. We'll keep an eye on those and try to get them answered for you. I'm not sure if I said so or not, but I'm Melissa Inez, your project community manager. And now I'm going to turn the mic over to <laughs> Diego. Hello, people. Thank you for joining us on our second lesson, hands-on on creating Fedora 4 resources. Uh, this uh, lesson will be divided in two sections. The first one will be mostly theoretical. The second one will be pretty much practical and we will be doing some awesome Fedora resource creation using the Fedora API. Um, We need some tools to start playing around. Basically, I have put there a GitHub repository with some files needed for this. And you can download that and hopefully create those folders during my speech. It's not necessary right now. And so we can start playing with all the assets we're going to build using Fedora. I'm assuming you are having some type of Nix operating system like OS X, Linux, or whatever. If you are on Windows, uh, it will be also possible to do this. We have the HTML interface for Fedora 4, but ideally we will work basically on a, a Nix operating system. Also, we need Fedora 4. There are many ways to install and deploy Fedora 4, but for this lesson, I choose the most easy one. is the one-click run application that you can download from the Fedora repo for GitHub repository. And the one we're going to use is the 4.5 one. And if you download it to the Cloud Lessons Fedora 4 folder, you can launch it using double-click or using the terminal using that command there. And we we'll also need some type of text editor. It can be something based on terminal like Nano, Pico, V, Vim, or something more fancy like TextMate or Text Wrangler. And for those Windows users, also Notepad. But if we can try to avoid that one, better. So let's talk about the Fedora 4 RESTful API. Basically, it's a way to interact with our Fedora 4 resources using LDP through HTTP. And there's a lot of documentation in the Dora Space wiki page. Uh, I will go through the basics of this, how to build and how to communicate with Fedora 4. But if you want to go deeper and see all the options, I recommend that you read this Dora Space wiki page a few times. It's pretty comprehensive, it's well done, it has a lot of information, and it's also very confusing. That's the idea of having this lesson. Basically, a RESTful API works on requests and responses. It's like talking to your server. And since we are working over HTTP, we have some methods to interact with Fedora 4. Basically, we have like get, post, put, patch, head, options, delete, move, and copy. Each one works directly on the resource path. So each resource path, as we see in the last session, uh, acts as an endpoint for a REST API. So if we have like a resource that is stored inside REST, grandpa, dad, me, and we want to modify or do something in that resource, 
we use that path URL. The term URL, URI, and path will be mixed up constantly during this lesson because at the end it's the same in this case. So, how do we interact really with this API? We have two simple ways of doing it using a command line app like curl that can talk to HTTP or using the Fedora 4 provided interface. It's a hate OS driven, you don't have to hate it. Some people hate it. Uh, interface that's pretty simple to use and allows to to navigate through your resources, to create new resources, and to make almost every single functionality work that you can get through curl. But it's pretty basic. Before we go into the details of how we interact, I would like to talk about what a HTTP request is and what a response is. Basically, when we talk to a Fedora 4 server, we are requesting something always. And Fedora 4 will respond to that request. So both the request and response are very similar. Internally, they have headers and a body. Even if blank, they exist always. Those headers serve as a way of transporting structure options, properties, and defining what the client, the one that makes the request needs, and what the server capabilities are, what we get back from the response. The body itself is the data we're sending. Normally, in our Fedora 4 interaction, this will be one type of data. We'll be sending RDF or a binary or whatever. But there's one exception that we won't be using much in Fedora 4, but it's possible. It's the multi-part body. And multi-part bodies are split and allow multiple values there. You probably know those from the Drupal web forms. Basically, you send something and the whole request has a file attachment and some values and all they get into that body. And I don't like multi-part because it's a mess to deal with when you have to parse it and, and understand what's inside. All thing about headers, headers are very important in this, are that they are standard. Non-standard headers exist and they can coexist, but we will be dealing primarily with standard headers because Fedora needs to know what we are asking for and we get some standard information back from Fedora that we can use to make decisions. And also responses have always a code. This code is also inside a header, and this code allows you to understand what Fedora did with your request. There are different numbers. All the numbers inside the 400, 400x, whatever, means error of some type. The 200s, 201, 204, or 200 alone means success, and there are type of different codes that you can read them further searching in Google. And the most basic thing is there is no response without a request. So the server sends nothing if we don't ask the server for something. So I would go directly into the terminal type of stuff, and probably you have used this before or maybe not, but it's good to make a quick review because we'll be using this a lot. Curl is a HTTP command application that is able to talk to servers using different type of HTTP headers and methods and data and whatever. And this will be during this lesson and the next lessons, and also when we test our Alandora Claw stack, your bestie, really. You can do whatever you want with curl, and we get much more information from this than using the HTML interface on Fedora. Basically, curl gets the first parameter, a method. A method means how we will interact with Fedora 4. And we get head, means fetching our source. Head means just fetching the headers for that resource, not the whole body. Post means we can create a resource as a child of a given URL. Put 
means we create or replace our source at the given URL. Patch allows us to modify resource triples using SparkQL. Delete, well, that delete. Move allows us to move our source from a current path to another one. And this includes all the subtrees. You remember inside Fedora 4, everything is a tree and they're connected. When you move something, you also move the subtrees. And copy is that it makes just a copy of the resource at a new path. So if we want to post something using curl, we use curl dash x post or curl dash x space post. I will avoid that space because it's easier to understand. Then we have these two other options. The minus v means verbose. And using this, we can see whatever is happening behind the scenes, what we are sending, what we're getting back. And I will show you in detail this, but there's some nomenclature basic that that symbol means have a data sent, that means receive it, and dot, that dash means uh, uh, additional info by curl that is not part of the sending and requesting. And if you want less information but still get the headers, you use the minus i. And that shows you every header code or whatever, but you don't have to see what's happening behind. So just use one. Minus V is good for debugging, and minus I is enough for what we need right now. Next one, the headers. Basically, in HTTP, headers are all. It's a way to tell the server in a structural way what we need, what we're sending, what we are accepting, also modify how the server responds. And basically, you can have multiple headers, and you need multiple headers sometimes. Uh, each header starts with dash h, and then the header name, and then the header value. And some examples are like the accept header. Accept header tells Fedora that we're asking for that type of serialization of information. Basically, if I say application LD plus JSON, I will get from Fedora JSON LD. Then I can also tell Fedora using the prefer header that I only want my RDF triples, not the ones that Fedora manages inside. I can also change the subjects of my triples, convincing Fedora about his own identity or changing the identity of Fedora by using a host. If I say host localhost 8181, all my new triples inside will start with that instead of the original one. Then we have like this new name Slack. And Slack allows us to suggest Fedora that he should use this name as name for new childs. And then we have content type to tell Fedora what we are sending. So if I have like an RDF written in a file, not just text turtle, I have to say to Fedora, hey, I'm sending you text turtle. Okay, one thing about headers, they're molar. So some headers are used for requesting resources and others are used when sending new data. And they are case sensitive. So if you write content type with the type lower case, you will get trouble. Next one, data binary. When we're sending stuff to Fedora, we have to tell him what we're sending inside the body. And we can attach something to the body using data binary. And basically what this stuff does is it takes the content of a file using this Aurora file name, and we just send this without any parsing as the body of the request. And you can also use full paths like my folder or folder my file. This is only used when we're sending data. It means post, put, and patch methods. No sense to use forget. And finally, what's basic is where are we connecting to? Or URL. And URLs means host, port, this base rest, and the resource path. 
So localhost 8080 rest grandpa.me works for a source that's inside the tree grandpa.me. And this is very important. Each resource acts as a rest endpoint. So we can do manipulations with RDF or binary or whatever directly using that URL. And when we are sending RDF, we also have to match the URL we're using to send this endpoint in our subjects. But luckily, LDP allows us to use this one to expand it to it automatically. So, so sometimes we don't need to put it directly. I will explain that in more detail when we go to the hands-on part. OK. First, if you already download this Fedora repo, web app 4.5 JT console, double click it. And if you double click it, you will get this splash screen with some port and some start button. If you push that start button, you will get a page like this. And this is nothing more than a stop page that allows you to go to the Fedora REST API endpoint on HTML. If you push that blue button, you will get into our HTML interface to interact with our REST API. This one is pretty simple. It's like you get the first, this big title is the resource endpoint path. Then you get all your triples, everything that defines your resource, properties, and some are managed by Fedora. You can also have your own. We have what we saw last time, these RDF types. So this one is a basic container. It's also an LDP container, and it's also an RDF source. We're looking at root. This is the base resource. And then we have these buttons to create child resources. It's like using the POST method on HTTP. We have this identifier, which is the new subpath for your new resource. It's like using this minus H slack. So we're saying Fedora A create a resource under 8080 rest with that name. We have this R window here that allows us to make some Spark, uh, Spark QL updates for this current resource. It's like using the patch method. And if we go down the page, we can create versions, we can delete this resource, and we can export and import. This is the basic interface. And we can do a lot with this, but not everything. And also, if you look back one, there are some triples and some information missing here because this is meant for normal users that want to just go around and look what one object is linked to another or whatever. But if we want to create some very fancy stuff and fun stuff, we will have to use curl. Okay. I will go out of full screen mode because I want to show you step by step how to create this, what we have as RDF and how this works. Basically what I'm going to do right now is very dangerous. Nobody does it live, but I will try. I think I tested it enough and let's hope it, it works fine. Okay, <clears throat> I will go out. Leave this as big as possible, and I will open this terminal here. I'm inside right now, now my assets folder. If you look, I'm inside Claw Lessons, Claw Lesson 2, my assets. The same you download from GitHub or will download after this presentation. What I will do first is to get whatever Fedora wants to show me about my base resource, my root resource. So I will do a curl, minus x get, and the path. 
If this is too small for you, just raise the hand or do some type of interaction with me and I will make it bigger. Oh, sorry. I have to start from Fedora. That was just a presentation. And it's starting. This is all real time. Great. Now it's started. There we go. So. <clears throat> What it did was to ask Fedora for everything it can tell me about this base resource, localhost REST. And this gives me a lot of information. Prefixes of this RDF, my triples, and whatever else. If you look at my slide here, you will see that by using the minus V option, I also get these symbols and that symbols back. Basically, this ones means what I'm asking for, and those backs means what I'm getting back. And I'm getting this, which are headers, links, and a lot of information from Fedora. Fedora is telling me that I can use, for example, to post something all these different formats, and that I can. Interact with this resource using move, copy, delete, post, head, get, push, patch, and options. And extra information about this. I will go into this, and this is very important. I, I also have in the terminal, but I want to highlight some stuff here. What you get when you ask for a resource is RDF. And RDF is basically built from two type of contents. The first one is named the namespace prefixes space, basically. And prefixes are a way of making shortcuts about all these type of ontologies that define different properties and classes and whatever. It makes sense to use them because you can write directly. Like here, Fedora writable, true, instead of writing Fedora info definitions version 4 repositories, writable. But for Fedora, it makes also an extra sense because it keeps track of these namespaces forever. So if you create a new RDF that has a new prefix, every time you ask Fedora again for a source, you will get that prefix added. If you see, there are some standard ones. It's like we have the Fedora, we have the RDF one, we have Premise, and we have Fove, and we have DC. What happens if you add a namespace that already has a name, like per or DC elements 1 1, but you use a new, an, another prefix, like DC 11? Well, Fedora just adds that. So you always have to be careful when creating prefixes to avoid filling fedora with nonsense prefixes or duplicated ones there's no way to my knowledge that you can remove those prefixes from a repository okay that makes sense we have prefix fedora the whole definition from our ontology and we're using it here the next one is everything we really know about our resource. Basically, that URI is our subject. If you look at, click on that, and I go into that, here, in my HTML, and then I get some typing. I'm telling this is an LDP RDF source, LDP container and basic container. So all the RDF types. 
and then we get all these triples that means the real definition of what this 8080 rest is and when we look at this root resource we are getting only server managed properties that means we can overwrite them we can delete them they are there and we have to live with them so we know this is writable and we know how 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 much uh, how many ch child the uh, children it has and how we can export it and if we can do transactions on that and we have also this way of telling in RDF that that zero is really an integer and not a string so we have explicit typing also further notes about namespace prefix it's basically very simple to understand that you can't use a prefix without defining it so if you want to create something in the fourth namespace like some url a fourth document you have to define the namespace prefix in your document if not Fedora will complain, I want you allowed to do anything. And that's all. So, let's create some resources. This is my evil master plan. Basically, I want to show you with some simple examples to use every possible HTTP method to create, modify, and interact with resources and what i want to do is to create some three basic containers very simple resources that will contain our ones then we will add a binary resource with a fixity and then inside these basic containers we will create our rdf resources one will be a fourth person type fourth is a very common and very simple to use ontology it allows us to define people, how these people interact with documents, and how these people interact with our people, basically. So we'll create this fourth person and a document. And then we will use this fourth ontology to link those resources, but not directly. Instead, we'll be using LDP. So we will use what we learned in the last se uh, sessions about how these magic containers, these indirect, con direct, or whatever containers, uh, facilitate this triple formation and tree building. So if you have this presentation open it will be a lot easier for you to follow what i will do oh this is very big let's clear this i will just copy and paste that because it's easier for me than typing everything we'll create three basic containers inside fedora so the first one will be created using post post method mm, what did I wrong sorry can't see what I did wrong it's my fedora running Let me test again, sorry. Maybe I, I, I passed something strange there. I will have to type. Ah, those double close. Okay. Copy and paste that one word. Local host. Okay, be warned. Always write 
your call request directly because double quotes, those are different than those. Okay, I will create this. Perfect. Let's look at what I got from response from Fedora. The first thing is a code, HTTP 1, 201 created, means Fedora got my request and created a new source. It gives me also a date, an e tag that is used for patching, and this is very important, allocation. HTTP, localhost, rest people, means I asked Fedora for a new source, a child for localhost 8080 rest named people, and it could create that resource at rest people. So I can use that. Perfect. So I will create a new one. That instead of people, this one will be named some docs. Let's clear this. Some docs. Okay, same response, 201. Okay, and lastly, I will create one for my pictures. I'll clear again so you can see it clearly. Some things. Okay, now we have three different containers, empty ones. I will go into my local host API. I will make this bigger so you can see it. And if I refresh this, you will see that we have three children for 8080 rest. Some ducks, some pigs, and people. And if we go inside any of those will have this just almost the same as we had on the root nothing from our own it's just a container it's an LDP container and LDP RDF source okay let's continue we have the stream now we will Upload a binary, but we will use fixity. So to build this fixity request, we will first calculate an HA1 for a given resource. If you could download this, there's a picture of me, and I will use this command open SSL sh1, and I'm currently in my assets folder me that and this will give me an sh1 hash that I can use to build this request so let's try this okay Let's dissect this before pressing enter. What I will do here is instead of posting something, I will use a put command. The put command in the, is different from the post one because I'm not telling Fedora A create something with that name inside a base resource. I'm telling directly, hey Fedora, create something with this URL. So I already have some picks, and I'm telling add this my pick. And I'm also giving this a data binary, this me.jpg, and also telling Fedora this file is of content type image jpg. And I'm passing the digest. There was some deprecated before a checksum parameter, a header, but now what is used is a digest, and we're telling digest 
SH1 and that number. If the number, this number I'm giving, doesn't match the reality of the picture I'm sending, it will fail. And also, if the upload is not completed and Fedora can match with what it gets this SH1, then it will also fail, which makes sense if we want to make sure that what we're uploading is stored the same way we want it. So let's do it. Perfect. So we get the digest. This is what we're sending. And Fedora is telling us, hey, continue, give me some information for my body. Okay, I have created this. And it was created at localhost 8080 rest some picks my page. But look at this, there's a new header that is telling us that beside this binary resource we uploaded, there's also an extra resource that has some metadata for this. And it's at some picks my pick FCR metadata. That means when we upload something that's not RDF, Fedora creates for us this container that allows us to define also extra metadata for that. This is very useful. Okay. Now we have, let's look here again. Go back one. Some pigs and some pigs has a child that is named my pig. If I press that, I will get into some pigs my pig. But what I'm looking here really is, is the FCR metadata. If I want to see the real binary, I can push push download. Okay, you will hear a lot of case from you today. Let's test the Fixity. Fixity has also a different endpoint. Let's clear this. Too fast. So I will ask Fedora, hey, issue a get on localhost rest some picks my pick, but using the Fixity. And what I will get is the whole RDF, some extra triples, the subject that is really my binary, and this is the most important thing, premise has event outcome success. Means what I have inside Fedora is exactly what I want to have. It's so like if I do directly an SH1 on that resource that is stored, it matches the one I gave it originally. So my resource is safe and it's working. Okay, let's keep on. So we have this, we have this picture uploaded, and now we'll have some real RDF created. The first thing I want to show you is a TT. ATTL. ATTL is a piece of RDF written in text turtle. It's one of the many RDF visualizations and is one of the easiest to use. And we'll look at this. First is the add doc. We will create this document. If you look inside this, I have these prefixes. I have to pass them because I'm going to use both. And I'm going to use the C. And I'm putting this NFO for you also. I will explain you in the next lesson why we're using that. And then I'm telling, do you remember this shortcut? That for this new resource, because I don't know the name, the path for that, so use that. That make this a fourth document and give it a title, title named my first resource. Adult. So let's create this. So what do I have to do? Same as before. I would tell, hey, use post 
to send this. Try to use this name, slug first talk. Where I'm sending you text type, content type text turtle, and my data binary is this one. And where do I'm sending this? Since it's a post, I have to give it a base resource. So the parent of this new child. In this case, I want to put this inside some docs. And there we go. 201 created. Perfect. Let's keep on. I will now cre create a person. So let's look what this TTL for this, this guy looks like. Same, we have these prefixes. This time I'm giving it a full path. If you see, we created a container named people, but that me doesn't exist yet. Why? Because we're going to use for this creation not a post, but a put. And in a put, I'm telling exactly Fedora where I want to have this resource stored in this tree. And I'm telling it it's a fourth person. And it has a this title, it has a fourth name, and a fourth inbox. So instead of issuing a post, I will issue a put. And let's see how it works. Let's clear this. There we go. 201 created. Perfect. Okay, let's look again at Fedora. I'm at home. I created a doc here at rest some doc. It has a child. It's named first doc. If I look at this, it has the title I gave it, my first resource doc, and it's also a fourth document. In case of that person, if I go into people, me, the one created, is a fourth person. And it has an inbox, my email, and my name, but also this title. I hope we don't run out of, out of time. Okay. Let's keep building awesomeness. This is very simple, but I think it's the way, best way to learn by creating some simple resources and interacting with Fedora. Okay. What I want to do now is to update this binary image that I uploaded, but I won't update the binary part. I just want to update the RDF associated with that. So I will use a different type of RDF serialization for that. And this is an SparkQL update one. Let's clear this. And look, let's look at what I built for this. My pick SparkQL. If you look, the first thing, and it's very important for this, is that the nomenclature used for prefix is not longer that ROR prefix. It's or uppercase or without a dot at the end. And then we have these different statements. I have a delete statement, I have an insert statement, and I have a where statement. The delete is run first. So I'm telling this, hey, take this predicate every core file name that matches nothing, because that's the way it's inside right now, and remove it. And then add a new one, telling that this image is a fourth image, and also add a new one named Evercore file name and give it a name. So when people download this, they will get a Diego JPEG. And since this is a SparkQL, we're using patch for this. It's a different method. Let's try this. Remember, we are updating RDF, so our REST endpoint is mypick.fcr metadata, 
not the binary. If we try to do this on the binary, it will fail. Same as before, we're telling method patch, we're passing a content type, in this case it's application Sparkle update, and we're passing this data binary, which is the file I showed you. And what I did wrong. Man. Let me look at this. This is right. Maybe something missing there. Let's try again. Oh, probably some strange character. Okay. I want you make w wait you any longer because probably I have some hidden character. We will do this using the HTML interface. It's the same. Let's go to some pick. Some pick my pick. I'm seeing the same here. I have this suggest. I have this pick and I have here this update properties I will use these so I will delete here forget the lot just put it what I need a uh, full match it's real time some stuff fails always let's try to update perfect and so right now, now this one is a false image. If I curl this, the same one here. There you go. You will see this. Some pick my pick an LDF resource and it's nematype Fedora binary fourth image. We're fine with this. Let's clear this and continue. Well in my test is this works but who knows. And now we'll do some magic. What we I want to do is to use LDP to create links between this document, this person, and this image. To do this, I will create first a new container named Diego's profile. What I want to do is like a small collection of information about myself. So I will just create this. This is a very simple statement. Perfect. I didn't give it a minus i or minus v, so just function it without any response. And then I will use this indirect creation TTL to build an indirect container inside that. If you remember something about indirect containers from the last time, indirect containers are a way of defining triple auto generation based on the ability to tell. Fedora that I want to use a specific subject, a specific predicate, and a specific object for something to link it. So I will create an LDP indirect container that has a membership resource for rest people me, my object definition of myself, the one that had this fourth M box. And that has this member relation, fourth mate, and will use this content relation to link one to another. This will be get more clear for you when I issue this post. If it works, of course. 
Okay. I will post this one inside a new container named creations. This will be an indirect container using this file inside Diego's profile. Come on, this time works. Perfect. Now we have this one created. This new one is an indirect container. So I can put stuff inside this. And when I put something inside this, Fedora will create the links I asked him to do. I will show you after issuing this one. Let's try this. Clear. Okay. Now I will put a new content inside this recently created in the right container named his first doc. It's a content type text turtle, and I'm passing this link me to docktl to this, the one that recently created. I will show you at the end what this link me to docktl has inside. Perfect, it was created. Let's look at what this had link to me to tl. What I passed there was Something very simple. I just passed a new resource. I don't know the name yet, so I use this. That has four publications. That was the predicate I gave it in the creation of the new container. Pointing to rest some doc first doc. That was the document I created at the beginning of this lesson. And here's the cool part. If I go home here and I go to this newly created one, Diego's rest, Diego's profile, I will see that Diego's profile has a child named Diego's profile creation. Okay. And creation is an indirect container that has this member relation, both mate, an instant content relation, publications, and a membership resource, rest people. That means that Everything I put here inside will link to myself, to this person. And it will use this predicate to connect to a document and will create mate inside that people pointing to the new one. This is the, the last one I created, creation his first dot. If I go inside that one, this is a stop. There's nothing here inside really. But this one tells Fedora that it points to a publication, the first document I created. Publications, some doc first doc. And I can go there. So I created this link. This is very simple. But this is the cool part. If I go home again and I go to the people, so I have all my people here, and I go to me, Fedora created something. Is telling me that Diego made rest some dog first document. So I have now a link created by Fedora that points that I'm the creator of a document that exists in a very different path. And this was all created by the indirect container. I will go again full screen. This doesn't look maybe so awesome for you, but it's really awesome. Because when we, when you are working with like many different types of predicates and you have a different ordering for your information, you can create this automatic triples and linked data using indirect containers and multiple ones. So I'm going full screen again. Already saw that. Okay. So the idea is you have to do now what I did for also the picture. Basically, this is a small homework. It's like you have to create 
a small indirect container that is able to link that picture we uploaded to that person. So if people add new pictures, they will be all get linked to that person, which is me in this case. And you can hear my dogs barking in the background. And basically what we have learned today, hopefully, is that this RESTful HTTP API is pretty awesome. You can do all type of stuff and manipulations. And you can also do different type of manipulations based, basically the same manipulations using different methods. So you can put a resource, or you can post to a resource, and both means creation. And our resource URLs are the rest endpoints. So we can use the direct path to do something there. Headers are used for send all the data we need and get all the data we need also. And basically we need to learn RDF. RDF is the way Fedora works and we need to master text turtle at least and then we will go next to JSONLD and all the other fun stuff. And still there's nothing to fear except for encoding and hidden characters when you work with RDF. So that is all and my talks are silent again. Thank you very much. Yeah, probably. It was one of this curl because I coped and passed from this fancy typography in there. I will avoid this for next time. Um, basically, if you take the same stuff I did and change some names, you can make the fourth image work. And there's a predicate that you can use if you have some time, named Fove depicts the picture. The picture, let me see. I don't know if I spelled wrong, uh, right, but that one links a person to an image. So it's the same. A methodology and you can build inside this Diego's profile as many indirect containers as you want and some of these indirect containers will build links between that person and the image and you can go on with that with documents or whatever. Uh, one of the things I avoided today since we have only two minutes left is the PCDM uh, information. Basically because PCDM adds another abstraction layer to building resources. And I would prefer that we are perfectly comfortable building resources before we start using PCDM. PCDM was built to make Hydra and Islandora talk the same language. But it's still like can you to be. So I will explain you how we're using PCDM inside the Islandora world because that will be our way of using PCDM when we get into our microservices API and working directly with that. And thank you very much for being so patient. I know there was a lot of different windows jumping around, but I thought it would be better to do it directly than showing you just some slides of about magic stuff. Thank you, people.
All right, that takes us to the hour. Thank you again, everyone. Um, we'll be doing this again next week at the same time.